Okay, here we go. I know I need to clean up my it's my clothes. Look what I got. Hi Nelly. Hi. Hi. It's kind of bad quality. And a little guinea pig. There she is. Hi. You sleeping? Are you eating your peppers? It good? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get on the deck profile. Oh. All right. So, what's going on, guys? Zeramus555 here. That was my little guinea pig that I just got. Her name is Nelly. And, uh, yeah, I need a little friend for the house because uh, Duddles is not my cat, and he is uh, not the most cuddliest creature. He kind of only ever wants to cuddle with you when it's his idea, which is pretty much never. Um, so, anyways, yeah, this is my Sylvan deck profile. Um, this is my new build. I'm going to give a uh, shout-out to Inch95 um, and Saber Selections. Uh, first of all, to Inch, just because I did see his profile and I did take some ideas from it, and his build is so consistent, um, and I've been kind of playing something close to it with my own a couple of my own cards um and this build is awesome uh it's super super consistent and it's really fast uh shout out to saber selection uh it's my friend hank um he he just got third place with his sylvans i don't think his build was great not to bash him but uh i mean it worked for him so that's all that matters um but yeah i just want to give him a shout out because uh seeing his profile kind of give me the inspiration to put this deck back together and this is one of my favorite decks of all time like i love sylvans um, so yeah, without further ado, uh, sorry for the ticking in the background, it's got some food in the oven. Let's get on with the deck profile. Uh, so we have one, two, three, Sylvan Hermitry. Uh, this is your heart of the deck, this is your one of your draw, many draw engines. Uh, this is basically 28 card Sylvans. Um, I don't run a lot of cards in here, it's all just like filler cards. Uh, so yeah, it's basically just like thin, get to your combos, win the game, and this deck does it extremely well. So yeah, three Hermitries, you gotta play three. I've seen people running two Hermitries, you're doing it wrong. Same as Sage Koya. Um, this is actually like one of my favorite cards in the deck. The more that I play this deck, the more I realize how amazing this card is. Um, essentially what Sage Koya does is whenever a Sylvan monster is sent from the, uh, or sent to the graveyard, uh, you can special summon it from your hand. It's only once per chain, so if you have two Sage Koyas, you can't summon both. Um, but I mean, it just gets your combos continuing, and uh, this dude it makes the arguably the best card in the extra deck, which is Aurea, uh, which I will talk about in a little while here. So yeah, gotta play three of him. Um, just two Princess Sprout. Uh, one is not enough. Uh, playing one is bad. You should be always playing at least two, because um, if you draw the one, the only way you have to get it back in the deck is with um, Sylvan Charity, which you're not always going to have. So having two is just really good. Um, it's also just level manipulation, so you can make it 7 and then synchro with it, you can make it 7 and XYZ, you can make it 8 and XYZ. Oh, excuse me. And, um, <laughs> sorry guys, um, yeah, she's just, she's basically just your, your XYZ card that, uh, is, uh, a replacement for, um, copy plant, which is just completely unnecessary. Um, one Peacekeeper, I see a lot of people not playing Peacekeeper. Um, I think you need to play this card at least at one. It's basically your third Princess Sprout. I wouldn't play three Princess Sprout. Um, because this card is also just really good because it can get Princess Sprout back from the graveyard, uh, to get Kim combos continuing, it can get back tuners from the graveyard, etc, etc. So this card's amazing. Obviously, you're going to mainly use it for getting back Lone Fire Blossom, but, um, it's just a really good card. It's also nice because if you normal summon it, uh, you do get to excavate, well, excavate one, so that does come in handy from time to time. Um, surprisingly enough, I'm playing one Cherub Sprout. Uh, I don't like this card, um, but the more that I've playtested, the more I realize how important it is to play this card. Um, it's just super, super strong. Uh, essentially what it does is you just get a special summon a level one tuner from the deck. So what I do with it mostly is I'll special summon Princess Sprout, but I mean, um, from time to time I've also used special summon Spore and then Synchro with Sage Koya, and then use the uh, Spore, it's kind of a one card combo in that sense, but you can use the Spore to banish the Sage Koya you just Synchro with to special Spore's level eight and then overlay. Um, with the Hermitry or the level 8 Synchro you just made. So there are some really cool combos in that sense. And I think Cherub Sprout is a necessity. It sucks to draw, but I mean, it is what it is. You can always put it back in the top of the deck with um, your 
Charity if you do draw it, um, which you're probably going to draw it because this deck thins so fast. And one Coma Shroomo. Um, setting this guy sucks. You can set him, but from time to time that effect does come into relevance. Uh, the main reason I'm playing this guy is I don't have any back row hate in this deck. It's kind of just turbo. Um, so I want to make my opening fields as consistent as possible. You can play Twin Twister in here. I just don't have room, so I decided just to side deck it. Uh, I won't show you my side deck because it's kind of irrelevant. Every time. Ugh, it's been a long week. Um, but yeah, you do need to play just one Coma Shroomo. I think two is overkill. One's enough. If you just need it to pop like a back row that's giving you a hard time, you just pitch your your uh, pitch with your uh, Mount Sylvania, put it on the top of the deck, and then excavate. Um, yeah, it, it's this this is it for the Sylvans. I think I'm playing uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, ten. Only ten Sylvans, I think. That sounds right. Oh, there we go. Food's ready. Um, three Lone Fire Blossom. You have to play three Lone Fire Blossom. Um, yeah, and the misconception a lot of people make of this deck is you, you should always go Lone Fire, Lone Fire, Lone Fire. Um, from time to time, you, you pretty much should always do that, um, or in, in the majority of cases, but it, it, it is kind of one of those situations where it depends on what's in your hand. Sometimes you might open double Lone Fire, or sometimes, um... Do you want to have a Lone Fire left in the deck for, for other reasons? Um, but, I mean, it, it, it is good just to go Lone Fire, Lone Fire, Lone Fire to thin. And, of course, it gives you bigger Soul Charge plays. Um, Soul Charge is basically the win condition for this deck, but you can win easily without drawing Soul Charge. I win many games by having Soul Charge. It's like the last five cards in my deck, and I'm still, I'm still winning the game. So, um, The one Spore and the one Glow Up Bulb. Not playing Dandelion. I don't like Dandelion. I think it's trash. Um... It's, it's just completely unnecessary. You're basically like adding in a synchro engine that this deck doesn't need. I realize that as more I've play tested, it just adds a lot of inconsistency. Um, you do need Glow Up Ball because he does allow you to do like double level eight plays. Uh, he makes helps you make Trish a little bit easier, and um, Spore obviously is, is just staple. Spore is amazing in this deck. And my last two monsters I'm playing is two Rose Lovers. I originally always played one, but I realized that like you want to open this card. Um, with Mount Sylvania uh, and like a big tree because that essentially sets up uh, your combo plays. Um, it's also really good because this card helps you play around since we're not playing any as much back row hate as most builds would. Um, it helps you turn or game one play around stuff like Solemn, Solemn Strike or Notice or whatever the heck it's called. Um, and Scolding. Um, just because what ends up happening is if you have the monster on the board that you special summon, they have to end up negating this thing's effect, which you're totally fine with because then you can keep going. Uh, and if they don't, you special summon the um, monster off of this, like a Hermitry, and then you activate Hermitry's effect, and it is completely unaffected by trap cards. So in that sense, it helps you get around uh, Rafflesia, it helps you get around, like I said, the counter trap cards. And um, they basically will activate the cards for cost. Your monster is completely unaffected by trap cards, and then you just got to keep going. Oh my gosh! Pardon me. So that's the monsters, guys. This is uh, so this is gonna be a yawn profile. Uh, it's only actually um, eighteen monsters. Really small monster lineup for Sylvans. Um, but I think that's really all you need. It's just like you have so many recurrence cards. I don't want to draw like brick hands full of Sylvans or plant monsters. So you just kind of play what you need. Cards that help you get to the combo pieces, and you go from there. So to start things off, the spells we're playing, obviously, Triple Civil and Charity. This is the funnest draw card in the game. It's also arguably the best draw card in the game. Uh, I think it is better than um, Soul Recharge. Uh, I think it's better than regular Graceful Charity um, in the sense that it helps you stack your deck, which is really, really important. Uh, and Sylvans. Um, so yeah, uh, you have to play three of this for sure. Uh, triple Miracle Fertilizer. Uh, you have to play three of this as well. Um, this card is basically just your recurrence card. Cool thing about this card that I love is much like Call the Haunted, if you overlay with the monster, um, it doesn't technically leave the field, the monsters that you're using as materials. Um, so they end up basically, uh, this ends up staying face up on the field and you get to, uh, use it once again in the turn so that's really or sorry not in the turn in the in the duel which is really really good um so here's my giant field spell deck thinning engine this is my uh cards that basically make my deck so they're 28 um it's basically a 28 card deck if you count the the, the um the sylvan charities as well so i'm playing two mount sylvania one is not enough that's one thing i'm going to say to you right now hank because i know you might watch this 
I don't know what you were thinking playing one Sylvania. I know that you were playing like three of that um, Sylvan Flower Knight, which is cute. But you have to play at least two, two Mount Sylvania. This card is the engine of the deck. This card gets your stuff in the graveyard um, that you might need. It just keeps fueling your plays. And it puts pressure on your pawn because at the end phase, you get to excavate, which could... Holy frick! Uh, yawn profile. We'll just say it's all the pollen. Um, it basically lets you set up your plays and it essentially allows you to put pressure on your opponent, like I said. So yeah, you gotta play double Mount Slum or uh, Mount Sylvania. It's it's amazing. So I'm playing triple chicken game. Um, this is just deck thinning. Uh, it also can keep you alive if your opponent doesn't want to blow it up and they want to get greedy and draw a card. Um, the other thing I love about this card, which I do with this deck often, is you can actually bounce this back, of course, with Aurea and then activate it and draw another card. So you can go plus off of Aurea with this card, which is pretty amazing. Um, Terraforming is my second, third, or sorry, <laughs> oh my gosh, I can math today. Fourth, fifth, and sixth terraform Terraformings along with the... Uh, chicken games because those are um, more deck thinning. Essentially, what this does is it just thins your deck by one card. I can search out whatever I want and allows some comboing. And then, of course, I'm playing the triple upstart goblin. Um, so yeah, those are like tons of deck things. Just deck thinning, deck thinning, deck thinning. Get to your combo pieces and win. Um, the next card I'm playing is one super solar nutrient. Um, I used to play two, but I think two is cloggy. This is just kind of consistency to get to lone fire. But the cool thing about this is that you can always just like. It, it's it's level uh, that monster's level plus three between that, um, so you can always just like tribute a level one, and then special like another level one, so like a glow up bulb or something from the deck, and then do synchro plays and then do more plays. So like this kind of just keeps your plays going. Yeah, it's a minus one, but it just like adds consistency turn one, which I think is kind of a necessity. Um, but overall, I th I think that one super solar nutrient is just a really good number. Uh, Foolish Burial, I think a staple in here. I used to not like it very much in here, but I think you do need it uh, just for dumping Rose Lover. You can dump the Tuners, and of course you can dump uh, Hermitry to bring back off Merkle Fertilizer. So yeah, Foolish Burial is a staple. I don't like one for one. It just opens you up to being uh, Max Seed. Um, this deck can get Max Seed, and then you can just stop, which is really cool. So um, yeah, I mean, I just don't want to give my opponent potential to gain advantage over me with the Max Seed. And one for one is already minus. Uh, and really the only thing I'm ever going to pretty much special off of it is the um, Princess Sprout combo. One of the best cards in the deck. So this is this is my second win condition next to Soul Charge. Um, in the sense that, like, if I open this card, it's... Oh, can you pick here? Here we are. If I open this card, um, it basically is always live. Because, excuse me, you can use it with Lone Fire Blossom. And you can also use it late game on like Hermitries, on Sage Koi's if you have multiple copies in the graveyard. Um, this card is amazing. Uh, I pretty much will always just use it with Lone Fire Blossom. Like this card's better if you're playing the Dandelion build because this plus Lone Fire is Trish. Um, but this plus Lone Fire is still amazing because it's a rank, it's a rank like 8 XYZ. The other thing to remember with this card is that you can't, I don't know why people aren't playing this. I guess because it sucks turn 1 if you don't draw Lone Fire, but I've never really had the problem. Um, the other thing that makes this card amazing is that you can bounce it back off of Aurea to activate it again. So that's really amazing uh, in the sense that basically what ends up happening is it says, if this card, um, when this card is destroyed, destroy the equipped monster. So this card goes back to your hand. It's not technically destroyed. Your monster stays on the field. Um, that's amazing. It's so good. Basically, uh, the only time this goes to the graveyard is if they MST it. Or twi Twin Twister is probably a better example. Or if they, uh, or if you synchro with it, the, this card goes to the graveyard via game mechanic. But if you bounce this back before the monster leaves the field, you can play it again. So really crazy combos you can do with this card, and I think that it's definitely a staple in Sylvans just because of the triple Lone Fire. Your win condition, Soul Charge. Um, I think this card should go back up. I know that sounds crazy for me saying that, but uh, there's really not a lot of decks that can abuse this right now, and this would help like crappier decks. Um, especially in a pendulum kind of game, like none of the meta decks use this. Uh, BA doesn't use this. BA is probably going to get hit anyways because Dante needs to go to one. But um, yeah, I can see Soul Charge potentially going back up to two because it's actually got a steep cost, and the fact that you can't connect your battle phase is pretty balanced. But I mean, it'll probably always just stay at one. But I mean, that's one of those cards that you could argue could go back up. Um, and then the last card, One Vanity's Emptiness. So that's it for the main deck, guys. Forty cards. Let's go through the extra deck really quick here. So we have one, two, Elsay. Um, 
I would just play one, but I don't have that new level 8 XYZ from the gold series. Uh, you can just cut an LSA out for that when it does come out. Um, I am playing one, two Felgrands. Yes, that is not a real Felgran. Kind of almost looks like it though, I almost tricked you. Actually, it looks pretty good in the camera. Can't really tell. Um, I just photocopied it, but because uh, I only have one Felgrand, and you do need to play at least two in here. You could even get away with playing three, but uh, yeah, I think I think, uh, I think think two is, is perfectly fine, just for space issues. And the one Heliopolis, I actually make this guy a lot. He's really good because he doesn't target. It's one thing I like about this deck, is a lot of the cards in this deck don't target. Um, so that adds a lot of consistency uh, to your offensives um, because there's so many cards right now, especially like Dark Destroyer and stuff, that uh, essentially dodges targeting um, or can't be targeted, which is irritating. So that's it for eights. So on to the sevens, we have one, two Aurea, the Sylvan High Arbiter. This is my favorite card in the extra deck. I love this card. Um, it doesn't target. Um, you just basically, I think you use a detach for cost. Uh, where is it here? Yeah, you just detach for cost, so that's amazing. Um, and then you, for at the resolution, you mill up to three, send them to the graveyard, and then bounce cards. So it's really good. This can bounce your own cards, it can bounce your opponent's cards, and once again, it doesn't target. So that's what makes this card so, so amazing. Plus the artwork's beautiful. Um, red eyes, one Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon. Um, this is the card I'll probably make the least in the extra deck, but it's still there. From time to time, I'll make like a board where I make this in Falgran. Um, or one of my favorite boards I, I make is this Felgran and a Stardust Spark, and your opponent's just like, uh, what do I do? And you're like, you lose. <laughs> um, Big Eye, my favorite, rank 7 in the game. Uh, Draco Sack. You, this card's still really good. It's still relevant. A lot of people aren't playing it. Um, I, I think you have to play Draco Sack. I think it's just, it's also really strong if you open this with Felgran. It's just kind of like a, kind of a tough field to get over. Um, so that's it for the XYZ zone of the Synchros. We're playing the one Leo, the Skeeper of the Sacred Tree. You can make this by banishing a level one with Spore and Synchroing with Leo, um, sorry, with, uh, Hermitry. Um, still a very relevant card, very strong, very good against Mermails. Uh, the one Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Uh, this is probably the hardest card to make in the extra deck, but you could still make it, so I think you have to play Trish. It is a plant deck. Uh, one Crimson Blade, really good against Monarchs, really good against, um, Water as well. Not as good against Water as it used to be, but I think you should still play it. The one Scrap Dragon, uh, you could take this out for that red, uh, that red dragon, Scarlet Red Dragon, or whatever that thing is. Um, and then start a Spark Dragon, this card's amazing, I'm so glad I got reprinted because I can actually play one now, and it's so good in this deck because you can protect your Vanities, you can protect your Felgran, uh, you can protect your Field Spell, Aurea, whatever itself, doesn't matter, super good card. So that's it for the uh, deck, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, let's get this up to 30 likes, and I will have an updated uh, something for you guys. I don't know what it's going to be yet. I still haven't decided. Uh, I do know there is a guy who's waiting for me to do Gravekeepers. I will try to toss that together. I do have all the cards. Um, I don't know how good it's going to be, but I'll, I'll do my best to do something for you. Um, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.